A Tale of Two Captains, a Shoto Todoroki X Reader, written by Joel's. Chapter 2 You dragged him about by the leg, trying to figure out where to send him off to this time. It was a silly little prank you played every time you managed to knock him out, putting him in a pod you didn't need and sending him back to his feeble army all bruised up. You had to hurry. Your crew was going to pick you up and take you to the next location of treasure. The pod you chose was a little small and cramped, one you'd used in your teens, but you could squeeze him in despite his height. You took what was on his person as compensation for your ruined vault. You were right about the three weapons. He had a shield, the gun he tried to kill you with, and a strange staff-like contraption that could retract and open up again. It was clearly your species' handiwork. You looked down at him, impressed that even he asked one of your kind to make weapons for him. A shame he didn't try to use it. It would have been a much more interesting fight. Picking him up was a hassle with the burn on your side, but you stuffed him in the pod and decided to leave a message for his friends. Well, hello, everyone. You cooed. This is your beloved captain speaking. Here is the one and only Admiral Shoto Todoroki. Again. Don't worry, I didn't kill him. This time. I did mess up that pretty face of his. You laughed and wiped a tear from your eye. <laughs> oh man, this one was a battle to remember. You guys almost had me this time. I'm impressed. You measly guard dogs still lost, but you know where my vault is, so come by. Pay a visit. I'll be waiting. You stopped recording and saved the message, setting the coordinates to their headquarters. The pod and the admiral were gone in seconds, leaving you alone. Now you had to find a new place to hide your belongings. Since Albatross was no longer connected to the base, you had to contact your crew manually. You headed for the control room and began to send a message to your ship. It only took a matter of seconds before your second mate responded. Captain, it's good to see you. How was your most recent caper? A female appeared on the screen, her brown curls covering her eyes. You smiled and waved at her, leaning back in your chair with a sigh. <sighs> Successful. With a few minor inconveniences. I got shot and the Admiral decided to pay a visit. He ruins my vault! She cast and lifted her bangs, four eyes blinking at you in shock. What? He didn't get inside of it, did he? Was he with others? What about- He gestured to stop her from asking so many questions at once. She was a very excitable woman, but a ruthless fighter and a loyal friend to you, so you couldn't complain about her outburst. He was alone today but he got a new toy from a buddy of ours. I'll fill you in when I get to the ship. Set a course for Earth and get the crew ready to move my riches. I'll see you in a few hours, Koval. You ended the conversation and walked back into the ruins of the fight's aftermath. There was glass everywhere. You needed to look into more protective cases for your new vault. If you went to cash in a few favors, then... Maybe you could get some for free. You walked to your parents' statue and looked it over for any damage done while that coward had been hiding behind it. Finding nothing, you pushed it to the side and tapped the door underneath three times. As it opened, you got on your knees so you could peer inside, poking your head in and checking your stock. The room was filled to the brim with weapons of all kinds. Stolen artifacts from kings and queens, rare minerals and substances, and the most important of all these treasures? Money. Millions and millions of quids covered the floor, so much so it wasn't even visible. There were four generations of loot in this one room. Four generations, and yet you were the only one that remained standing to this day. You extracted your head out 
once it began to throb from being upside down for too long. As you closed the vault, a slow, disoriented voice began to echo from your computer. Albatross? Are you okay? You asked gently, sitting by the computer and quickly running the diagnostics. Whatever had entered its system was killing Albatross from the inside out, and fast. Your fingers danced across the keyboard frantically, trying to fight this virus with everything you had. Albatross had been your family's AI, and you weren't in the mood to add it to the list of people you'd lost. You entered one last backup code and lifted your hands, waiting a few seconds. Welcome home, Captain. Is there anything I can do for you? He's okay. Thank goodness. You rested a hand against your chest to put your worried heart at ease and nodded. Back up all the files once more and update the status of the vault to empty. Shut down all the computers and cameras permanently. Also, transfer yourself to the ship. We'll be moving shortly. You began to leave once you felt a loud rumble and hiss. Of course, Captain. I look forward to hearing from you soon. The computer turned black and powered down. Shouts and laughter from your crew drew closer, making you smile. They were the family you cared for now. Their laughter made you remember why you were one of the most notorious pirates in the galaxy. Am I right? I'm wrong? <laughs> you heard the news from the captain, right? Yeah, the blasted admiral showed up. Fuck that guy. Right in the ass. Well, I'd like to see the day where that happens. <laughs> They all grew quiet when they noticed the condition of the room. Your second mate spoke first. He did all of this? She seemed quite surprised by the fact that Admiral Todoroki could cause so much damage. You sighed and let out a chuckle. Ah, uh, <laughs> I admit, I got a little trigger happy when I saw him. He and the devil's wife had a lovely date today. Everyone gasped and began laughing hysterically, throwing crude jokes around for a bit before starting to clean up. <laughs> Guns up his ass, see what I tell you? you. Tell me anything. <laughs> I told you everything. That's exactly what I said. Isn't that what I said? That's not what you said. No, I think that's what he said. Oh, Koval, you weren't even listening. I was listening. No, nah, you were talking to your best friend the whole time. Don't be mad just because you don't have any. Oh, oh, I am so not even in that. Mm -mm, not right. You know what? It's, it's not even funny anymore. So can we just clean up or whatever? Uh, you know what? It's not even funny. Oh, my feelings were hurt. So, uh, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> ah, dude. As you retreated to a ship, you felt a small tug on your shirt. You looked down to see the smallest member of your crew. They called themselves RJ, and you had no idea what they were, but they'd proven to be very useful to you. Yes, RJ? Did you get something from the auction today? RJ responded simply by humming and lifting a small drive up to you. The most wanted prize, huh? I'll check it out in my office. Thank you, RJ. You saluted them and walked up the ramp into your ship. La Boim was a magnificent vessel, large enough to hold a million people and powerful enough to tear down even the biggest of bases. Equipped with the long spearhead in front, your family had led many raids on this ship and come back richer than the elite, driving kings and queens to the brink of insanity the instant they saw La Boim entering their planet's atmosphere. The ship had everything you needed inside of it. You knew its prowess was what got crew members for every planet you raided. The main deck was covered wall to wall with glass panes. Every time you walked in, the view always took your breath away. The blue waters of the Arctic Sea sheltering your base made the deck glow humbly. The podium in the center of the room began to glow. Multiple monitors popped up surrounding it once you stepped onto it. Your crew began to bring bags in with all of your goods. Carefully set them down with the rest. Use safe 16, or if that one's getting full, open 17. Please be sure to send me the codes, I won't remember them all. A chorus of, yes, 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 yes. filled the room and faded once they headed to the lower deck. 
You double-checked if all your files had been uploaded safely, sans virus, and made sure that Albatross was fully synced up. Once you finished, you pressed a button on your podium and sent the transparent elevator tube down from the ceiling. The podium detached from its spot, and the tube lifted you up to the highest part of the ship. Your office. Albatross, I need you to show me what's on this drive. RJ told me it was imperative that I see it. You placed the drive in your deck and looked outside the window while you waited for Albatross to execute the command. Scanning. It seems to be a file on one of the personnel within the Guard of UA. Does this interest you, my captain? Yes, it does. Tell me, who is it that we managed to unearth this time? You languidly observed your fingernails. It was probably some private or another general. Regardless, RJ was going to be rewarded for his efforts. The file has all the information about Admiral Todoroki. It seems... Most of his documents have been sealed away for the purpose of hiding the true origins of his scar. And more. A devilish smile stretched your lips as you turned to face the flashing screens of the podium. All this? On Admiral Todoroki? Well, it was a dream come true. Pictures of him were on each file. The amount of forbidden information on the displays was enough to make you drool. Albatross, remind me to promote RJ when I'm finished dealing with the Admiral. This is going to be oh so sweet. Powerful enough to tear down even the biggest of vases. I just said vases. Flower vases, cacti vases, vases filled with chocolates that people give you on Valentine's Day. Nope. Vases filled with those glass marble things that you get from the craft store or whatever. It can blast all the base, the, the vase, vases, the flowers. I know what those are. We're gonna blow them up with my ship. <laughs> Imagine if Todoroki wakes up while flying to the headquarters, just squished up in this pod. He's just like, dude, what the hell? He's just distraught, like, what in the name of prepubescent tomfoolery is this? That was a weird laugh. <laughs> like, oh ho ho ho, ho ho ho, very quick. Hey, 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 is your captain, is, is your captain Mina? Set a course for Earth and get the crew ready to move through meh. You needed to look into more protective cases for your new vault. You need a whole new house now. You need to go on HGTV. Team up with the Property Brothers. Remember that room trading spaces, boys versus girls? The kids traded spaces and they had to like build each other's rooms and it was fun or whatever because child labor is a good time. <laughs> Some of those rooms were really intense and it's like, it's super cool when you're like, 12 years old but when you're like 17 18 years old and you've grown like half a foot taller and you have like a race car bed installed into the upper portion of your wall what are you supposed to do what if you don't like thomas the train anymore and now you're left with the thomas the train room as an adult you try to come home for the holidays and there's thomas the train just staring back at you you try to bring your significant other home to meet your parents and there's Thomas the train and your significant other's just like dude what the hell you're just like sorry honey I was on trading spaces boys versus girls listener is like the ultimate couponer like doomsday prepper type mess on that unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt type energy Ooh, damn it ah. your fingers danced across the dinner. where are your thoughts held in your brain pocket my brain Pocket. It's where all your smarticles are held. Always gotta have you some of them mermanemness. I'm not even gonna apologize for that one. If you're at this part of the video, you know all bets are off. No one's safe here. Not even me. Yo goodies. Yo goodies. Yo goodies. Yo, yo goodies. The podium attack. 
I let my dog in here, and all she did was eat glitter and some spaghetti sauce from one of the bowls I left in here. So, um... Yeah. <laughs> and powerful enough to tear down even the biggest of vases. I said vases again. 